What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Goat Life TV where we show you a little bit of our digital nomad lives. We are back in Kyrgyzstan. We're in the village of Jirgalan right now. This is in the far northeast of the country, just east of Issakul, and it is a beautiful little village set right at the bottom of these massive snow-capped mountains. We're here with USAID, BGI, and Discover Kyrgyzstan, and we're going to be exploring the country for 10 days. We've actually got a really unique trip planned with them. They're taking us up to this pass right behind us into the Jirgalan Valley. It's going to be gorgeous, and we're one of the first tourists to ever go up there, and we'll be helping the mark trails. After that, when we come down after four days, we're going to be heading around the Karakul area to partake in some cultural activities. We're going to see some eagle hunting, do a cooking class, stay in local yurts, meet local families, and it'll be all really cool cultural experiences here in Kyrgyzstan. Yeah, this place is beautiful. I cannot wait to get going tomorrow morning. Let's roll. Let's do it, guys. <laughs> Люди моря штормовые и в белые пятна необжитых стран, а я полюбил твои горы седые. All right, so it's the last night before the trek, and we are just gonna sit down here, and we're all gonna finally get a proper rundown of what this trek's gonna entail. We're gonna look at the topographical map, talk to the guides, and figure out the route, and also exactly what we need to carry, what we don't, and yeah, see what's gonna happen. All we know so far is that there's a lot of snow up there. Yeah. We're really hoping we'll be able to go over the entire pass, but if not, at least we'll be able to go up as far as we can, try to mark as yeah. much of the trail as we can, and come back down yeah. to safety. Yeah. But we can only do what we can do. It's gonna be an adventurous <laughs> trek, that's for sure. So we've been sitting here for about, I don't know, 15 yeah. minutes, just listening to them speaking together in Russian and I think the entire plan has changed because the weather is crazy right now there's like four meters of snow at the pass on the second pass as well so literally they're hashing out a new route as we speak yeah I think we're going to a new area that's never been walked before still never been hiked still unmarked it's just gonna not be so high in altitude and therefore we should be able to get over it rather than getting stopped by snow yeah so that's what we're doing now we just finished up the briefing from this entire trek that we're gonna do tomorrow. Everything changed around, the plan changed. Now we're just packing up our gear, and we're also changing the way we're packing the gear. So I'm just moving my stuff around right now, and tomorrow morning we're gonna get up at around 7.38 and leave here by nine. Sweet, and check out our yurt. This is where the four of us are staying tonight. Yes. One, two, three, four beds. Good morning, guys. It's like eight in the morning, and we slept like babies in the yurt last night. <laughs> this morning, sunny. We're so excited to get out and trek today. Check out the mountains. We could see them yesterday. They were in clouds, and it was raining. Today, we're hiking for about 15 to 18 kilometers, going to Akia. I don't think it's supposed to be too strenuous of a day. And like we said yesterday, we're the first people on this trail, so we'll be painting the rocks and marking the trails ourselves. Yeah, for future tourists, it's so exciting. So I think they're just making breakfast in this building here beside us. We're yep. gonna go eat and get ready for the day. Let's go. We got our backpacks on, the horses are loaded up, they'll be carrying all of our food, we'll be getting water from the rivers, yep. and we're pretty much ready to hit this trail. Yeah, the horses this time are actually taking our tent and sleeping bags as well, so unlike Torres del Paine where we had to carry everything, this time we just have our clothing and water. This is much lighter, yeah. I can't wait to get on that trail and see this beautiful scenery here in the Jirgalan Valley. Yeah, we're stoked. Let's, Let's do go. it. <laughs> So we just found out that back in the 1800s when Russia came here to Kyrgyzstan, they started forcing some of the Kyrgyz people to make weapons and they forced them to stop their nomadic lifestyle. But a lot of the Kyrgyz people didn't like that, so they fled into China. The interesting thing is that they actually used this trail that we're walking on right now. This part here has been marked by foreigners and obviously Kyrgyz people who were fleeing in the 1800s. But as we leave this part of the trail, we'll be on a part that only few people have been on and I think we're the first foreigners to mark. But look at this scenery, just gorgeous. Get a big one. With rocks and shit. <laughs> <laughs> We 
We've been trekking now for two and a half hours and we've now reached the Ekachat area. This area is where all the shepherds and the herders come and they set up this area with their yurts and everything and they spend the summer here in these green pastures at the bottom of these mountains and you can see them here behind us. And they've set up this yurt now which is just newly opened for tourists as well so if you want to do like a day hike or something you can stay in this yurt, it's pretty cool. We've been hiking for about 12 kilometers now and we finally left the part that's already been marked. Now we're on our own trail. We're marking it ourselves. We got Anvar here, he's got paint and he's gonna be painting on this rock so the next generation of tourists and trekkers will know to come up this way. And we're gonna be heading up to that pass there. That's the Jurgalan Pass and it's about 3,200 meters. the Jurgen Pass at 3,332 meters. It was a pretty easy slope. It wasn't too steep all the way up, which was nice. And there's beautiful views at the top here. We had a little bit of rain on the way up, but not so bad, just a bit of a drizzle. Now we have a descent and then we're gonna make camp. We were hiking for around eight and a half hours and we did about 20 kilometers today. It was cool to mark the pass along the way with everybody. That was something we've never done before. And right now we're camping next to the Toop River and we're just gonna set up camp and have some dinner. So camp is all set up. We got a fireplace over here roaring. Keep us warm because it's getting a little chilly as the sun goes down. And up here everybody's preparing the dinner for tonight. So some people are peeling, some people are cutting. We're all helping out for this one tonight because we got a lot to cut up and cook before it's completely dark. Okay, it's seven in the morning and uh, we're just getting up and packing everything. It was bright at like four o'clock in the morning this morning. You can see the sun coming up over the mountains and our tent was getting bright. Um, so today is day two and we don't even know how long today is because we're marking this trail for the first time so the guides don't even know how far it's gonna be. But they're guessing it's gonna be a really hard day. So we're gonna go have some breakfast. I think they're gonna start cooking it up pretty soon. We're gonna pack up these tents and get on the trail. Let's do it. How many kilometers can you make a horse run or walk in like a day? How many kilometers can you make a horse run or walk in like a day? No more than 60 kilometers. 60.
camp. We've walked eight kilometers so far. We were worried about getting across that river, but luckily it wasn't too bad. So the horses brought us across. And since we've crossed, we've just been walking through these beautiful meadows that are covered in a blanket of flowers. It's been just gorgeous. Now that we're hiking up, we're in with a bunch of pine trees. We're like in the forest now. So the scenery is definitely changing. It's stunning. So we're sitting down here having a nice lunch and uh, we were just having our regular meat and cheese and the family here brought us out this nice little soup, logman they call it, this logman bowl. It's got noodles, it's got lots of meat, some veggies in there. It's actually really tasty and it makes our lunch a lot better. Plus we've got this freshly milked mare's milk, fresh out of the horse. Fresh out of the teeth. And I'll take a little sip just for camera, I've already had a sip but... Not too bad, I've had it before. This one's actually not as strong as some of the other ones I've had. It's not so salty, so cheesy. But this is a nice little meal we got going on here. We just made it to the top of this pass. It's at 3,300 meters. It turns out that this pass is unnamed, so we have decided to call it Godosaurus. Goats on the road That's and Nomadosaurus, right. we yeah. We have a pass. We have our own pass here in Kyrgyzstan. Woo. It's about 4.30 right now, or five o'clock. So we've been walking for about seven and a half or eight hours. We're gonna start making our way down the mountainside here so we can find camp. I asked the guys uh, how long down, and they said, well, we're just gonna go down, and then we have to uh, figure it out from there. <laughs> It's all part of this marking the trail thing. <laughs> we don't know what's going on at all, but all I know is I'm exhausted, so I hope that there's a camp soon. So we're just sitting here at the end of the day having some rum and some tea and some snacks and Azamat's never had rum before so this is his first try. Woo! You like it? It's good. Rum, good? Rum, good. Good. <laughs> and he likes it. <laughs> Which is to the bottom. To the bottom? Uh, yes. Alright, bottoms up. Yeah, you let me pet him for a while this morning. Oh, really? Yeah. Built a yurt, yeah. they ate borsok and, yeah. and all the salad on the table. So it's day three, the final day of our trek. We woke up this morning, beautiful weather again, looking out at this view outside the tent when we unzipped our door. And now we're gonna be having breakfast over here, the perfect setting for it, getting ready for this last day of the trek. It's gonna be another long one, probably about 15 or 20 kilometers all the way back to Jurgalan. We got blisters on our feet, but we're stoked to eat this meal and then hit the trail again. Let's go. We've been walking now for a couple of hours and we've kind of been going up and over all these little humps. Yeah. 
But now we're finally gonna make our way down into this valley. And from there, we believe that it's all the way to Jergalan and it's gonna be kind of flat. We can see a sort of dirt road down there. Right now, we're just sort of walking on goat trails. <laughs> We just hiked all the way down these mountains behind us here and now we're at the bottom of the valley heading back towards Jergalan. We're following the river for um, maybe 8 kilometers, maybe 10, maybe 15, probably no more than 20. Yeah, <laughs> the guides have no idea. <laughs> Nobody knows, so it might we're be guessing. a really long day. We're guessing, but we, uh, we probably have at least 3 hours to go. Asamat, our horse guide, told us that there wasn't going to be any rain because he knows if it comes up the valley it rains. It turns out he was wrong because rain is falling on us right now. It's kind of nice though because this time yesterday we were scourging hot going over the pass. So now we're nice and cool for this little uh, hill we have up here. Got to get over it one more pass but it looks like a small one yeah. back to Zergalan. Almost there. So we just left the main road where we might have been able to pick up a ride. Came up this valley here and we talked to this family that's staying out here in their, in their homes here in the Jilo and they told us it's at least 8 kilometers more up this valley to Dragalon and it just started hailing and they're like small marble sized hail and they hurt if you don't have a hood on. <laughs> Gotta pack up and get back on the trail quickly. Oh, so we think we've done about 17 and a half or 18k already. It's been up, down, up, down, up, down. We got hailed on. We got this wicked storm coming behind us. I'm wearing my flip flops because my feet are so blistered and we came up over this pass and we looked this way and Azamat's been saying oh yeah which is one more pass one more pass we come up and see this and there's nothing but meadows for another like four kilometers so it's gonna be a long friggin day <laughs> Teresa's hair is attracted to the lightning storm it feels weird it it's feels sticking weird. straight up So we're feeling pretty exhausted ourselves, but maybe not as exhausted as this horse here. She's not carrying as much weight as the other horses, but she is looking pretty tired. Oh, we still got 4K to go before we reach Jurgalan. Don't break my back. Just hug for a little bit. <laughs> oh, what's a hug? <laughs> we're at about 21 kilometers right now. Is that about right? 20? We've walked about 20 kilometers right now, and finally, right here, we could see Jurgalan Village. Jurgalan! <laughs> we were all screaming as we came over the ridge, like, yeah, Jergalan! It's not a mirage, it's real. Yeah, it's happening. We're almost there. We probably got another about 3 or 4k left. Yeah. Let's do it. We are officially back in Jergalan. We just walked past the sign welcoming us back to the village. <laughs> we walked about 60 to 63 kilometers in three days over three different passes that were over 3,000 meters high. I mean, it was an intense trek, but it was so much fun. Those are a lot of big numbers. Yeah, it was. It was, and it was just beautiful the whole way. It was really interesting though, because we really had no idea what we were doing the whole time, because the whole point of this was plotting a new trek. It was figuring it out as we went, but I think we did really well. Yeah, there were a couple points on this trek where we were on like really narrow uh, paths, you know, and it was slippery, so it was a little bit more sketchy, but I think that they're gonna find better yeah. paths along the way. And at the end, this is gonna be one incredible trek for everybody to take part in. It was so exciting to be the first people out there on this trek that nobody had ever done before. It was made up by our horse guide. And we even named a couple passes. We named a pass after us, yeah. Gotosaurus, like with Jazza and Alicia from Nematosaurus. And we were naming passes after all the other people in our group because yeah. there were just so many of them that we went over. The food was fantastic, the group was amazing, and the scenery here was absolutely stunning. Don't miss Jurgalan. Come to Kyrgyzstan, come to this village. It's up and coming. It feels so raw and authentic and real. And the trekking around here and the horse trekking and soon to be cycling is incredible. All right, guys. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. That's another episode of Goat Life TV. See you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.